Okay, so Tyco version 12.2 has just now been released and the main focus with this update is on the Comet Photometry module. So I want to take just a moment to share with you what these enhancements are and then to go through a walkthrough on how to use this module uh, with these enhancements. So the first enhancement is more control over the sky background. So this is one of the main inputs to photometry is uh, how that sky background is computed. Uh, next, we have the ability to easily measure the comet tail information. This would include uh, the tail length and position angle. And now we also have full support for the ICQ format. So I'll go into what that looks like here in a moment as well. And finally, extinction correction. So for those of you who measure comets that are low in altitude, uh, that this can be a nice to have feature. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with an example. Okay, so as before, I will be providing two different examples. The first example is fairly straightforward, just a single exposure. And the second example will demonstrate how to make use of multiple exposures of a comet. So with that, here again, this is the first example, a single exposure, 30 seconds in duration. I go to Action, View Images. And the way we access this module is by going to the Photometry menu, choose Comet Photometry, and this presents a new window here. And because this is just a single exposure, both the star image and the comet image are the same. So I choose Apply from Image Viewer to both. Next, we want to specify the comet origin. So we adjust the crosshairs to position the comet origin as desired. Choose Apply from Image Viewer there. Next, we want the comet name, comet Earth distance, and the comet Sun distance to be populated. Two ways to do this. One is to go to Image Manager, choose Ephemeris attached from JPL Horizons, and then choose either the number or designation. The designation of this particular comet is C2024G3. Then choose Ephemeris attached to Dataset. So you give it a moment and you can see it has now provided this overlay as well as populating these fields here. The other approach is to go to the Settings menu, choose Overlay, and then choose Apply Object. And with this, we could choose, again, either the number or name. So that, again, this is C2024G3. Click Search. And it should present with at least one result. And hopefully that result is uh, the object of interest. So you click on it, choose Click OK, and give it a moment, and it will update uh, the parameters accordingly. So those are two different ways in which we can uh, easily input uh, this information. Next we have extinction correction. Three different options here. One is to never apply extinction correction. Apply it only when the object is below 10 degrees or always apply extinction correction. In this case the object is at 4.7 degrees in altitude so it would be eligible uh, under this condition here. We have also a coefficient. It could be average, winter, or summer. Next we have the coma aperture. The unit can be pixels, arc minutes, or kilometers. And we also have the format that could be radius or diameter. Then we have the inner annulus, middle, and sky annulus. We can adjust these accordingly. Then we also have scale factor. So if we are working with a particularly large comet, for example, a scale factor 20 could be used, or an even larger comet scale factor 50. And you can see what that looks like if I zoom out more. Uh, again, we have the ability to work with uh, very large comets, but for now, for this example, I, I will return the scale factor back to 1. Uh, we also have the ability to toggle the display of the aperture rings and the aperture text. So you have that capability with this enhancement. Next, we have star removal. Uh, that is the same as before. The ignore radius is simply where it starts to apply the process, and the coefficient is how aggressive it is. So if I use the default of 7 and 3, we can see what that looks like. And you can see that uh, it may be a little bit too aggressive because it did uh, subtract out some of the comet tail. If I increase it to 5, uh, you can see what that looks like here. So I give it a moment to update. So again, you can adjust these parameters however you want. Uh, next, we have the sky background. Almost always you want to use sky annulus, but you now have the option of choosing a region that you draw uh, outside of the comet. So I'll show what that looks like in a moment. Then finally we have the different actions to walk through. So these are typically in the order you would perform them. So we have comp star aperture, 
you can adjust uh, how you might want the comp stars to be uh, measured with the different aperture settings here. Then we have the ability to choose the comparison stars. And of course, this is a particularly important part of the process. Uh, which comp stars you use will have a particularly uh, important impact on the uh, photometry. So we want to select comparison stars. And again, I typically choose between four to five comp stars. So right click, choose add act or comp stars. And I just continue to walk through this again once I have between four to five different comp stars here. I am going through this pretty quickly, but just keep that in mind. Uh, you have uh, the ability to look at these in more detail uh, as desired. Next, we have the ability to measure the comet tail. So uh, with that, uh, I can go to the comet, just click the go to button here, and then choose measure comet tail. And the first marker here, this is marker one, I place it uh, where I want to place at the start of the comet tail, and then marker two, I position it marker two wherever I want uh, the endpoint of the tail. So this would be the length and the direction of the comet tail. Then we also have full support for the ICQ format. So you can click update ICQ settings here. Observer, method, telescope, camera, and chip. These are all different inputs to the ICQ report. So these different drop down menus here allow you to make adjustments accordingly. We also have additional information. We can include location, we can include comet altitude, and you can click OK to save the settings. And finally, generate report. So when you click on that, you have two different windows appear. This is the comet graph window here. And we also have the comet report window. So as you can see here, this is the ICQ line here. So the measured magnitude is 7.7. .7. The tail information is indicating 1.2 arc minutes at 224 degrees. And you can see that the other bits of information as well here. So comet altitude, 4.7 degrees. So I mentioned this comet would be eligible for extinction correction because it is going to meet that criteria below 10 degrees. So what happens if we turn off extinction correction? So first, as you can see here, it measured the magnitude at 7.7. .7. If I turn off extinction correction, choose never, and I regenerate, from 7.7 .7, now it's 7.72. So extinction correction generally will not have a huge impact. It just depends on what comp stars you choose. If the comp stars are far away from the comet, then that will make a more of a profound uh, impact. But in any case, you do have this option here. And the sky background. So you can see here it computed a sky background of 2319. But what would happen if we choose to draw our own region and have it use that option. So if I hold down the shift key and draw a rectangle here and I click update, you can see it actually computed exactly the same. So sometimes that happens, it just really, there's not a huge amount of variation in the background because it selects the median. But if I choose another region here, choose update, you can see it computed 2318. So off by one, very, very similar. But in any case, you can see what that looks like. So you have the ability to choose a, a region outside of the comet for the sky background. But almost always, you might as well just choose sky annulus unless you have some particular reason not to. So that is the first example here. Now let's take a look at example number two, where we can measure the comet using multiple exposures. Okay, so this is the second example. As you can see here, we have four exposures. They're each 60 seconds in duration. I go to Action, View Images, and as before, I go to Photometry, Comet Photometry. And as you can see, this is the comet of interest here. Now, because we have multiple exposures, the star image and the comet image will be different. So first, I create the star image. And the way to do that is to specify zero motion and the desired stacking approach. It could be average, maximum, or median. I like to choose median. And I also want to make use of all four exposures. So I choose selection all. And having done that, it creates a stacked image. So with that, this is going to be the star image. So I specify it by clicking on apply from image viewer. Next, I want to create the comet image. 
So I first navigate to the first exposure. And in this example, I will have to adjust the contrast so that I can see the comet position more clearly. I double click to center it, and then I right click and choose create marker number one. Next, I go to the last image. And as you can see the movement here, I double click to center it, and then right click and choose create marker number two. So we now have two markers that define the motion of the comet. Finally, I choose track motion and then right click and choose create stack from markers. So as you can see here, this is the comet image. The stars have a sort of trailing effect to them while the comet has been stacked according to its motion. So with that in mind, I can now choose apply from image viewer to set the comet image. So this is how we can make use of multiple exposures with the Comet Photometry module. Uh, every step after this is identical to the first example, so I will not repeat them here, but if you do have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. So that is about it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.